Good day, audience. Thank you for taking the time, having your attention, tune in on this short presentation. I'm Roland Serafica, and I'm a registered nurse in the Cayman Islands. My agenda today is to share with you my study about the role of digital competence and its relation with health information technology and service quality provided by the nurses in the region of the Cayman Islands. My objective today is to share current data in this region about this particular topic and hopefully add value however this study may contribute to others or fellow researcher. The rise of technology like information communication technology has changed daily life, making communication faster and data storage more accessible. In healthcare, it's been a game changer, but shifting from old methods to new digital system brings challenges, especially because healthcare is unique. It needs complex teamwork and deals with subjective outcomes. If people in healthcare don't have good digital skills, it can affect how well they use health information technology or HIT impacting service quality. Understanding what affects the use of HIT and digital skills can help make healthcare better. Various studies like in 2018, 2020, 2021, and 2022 have checked out how well healthcare serves patients. It point out that to measure healthcare quality, it's not just patient feedback, but also what staff managers and administrators say. Healthcare has been changing for about 60 years with ICT. Even though it takes time, healthcare keeps adding tech to make clinical work better and services top notch. Health information technology has jazzed up healthcare by making communications better, improving safety for patients, and making things more efficient. Things like electronic health records have proved to cut down on medical errors, follow guidelines better, and keep patients safer. HIT also helps teamwork and gets patients more involved in their care, which changes how professionals work, making services smoother. Both healthcare workers and patients benefit from things like virtual appointments, easy access to records, and fewer mistakes. Going digital has made outpatient clinics faster, and patients happy, happier. It's time to leave, leave old ways behind and go for evidence-based informatics. This research aims to understand how digital skills impact the link between healthcare tech use and service quality among nurses in the Cayman Islands. It focuses on these questions. First one is how extensively do respondents use HIT in terms of hardware and software, clinical content, interface, people, workflow, organizational policies, rules, and monitoring. How do respondents perceive service quality concerning tangibles, empathy, responsiveness, assurance, and reliability? What is the level of digital competence among respondents in terms of data literacy, collaboration, content creation, problem solving, and safety? Are there significant connections between HIT use and service quality or links between HIT use and digital competence, or connections between digital competence and service quality. Also, how much does digital competence affect the relationship between HIT and service quality? Do the demographic factors like age, sex, education, and practice type impact service quality perception, or which variables predict service quality significantly? The proposed study on digital competence and HIT use in nursing practice holds significant benefits in three essential areas of nursing. First one is in nursing research. It adds to existing knowledge about how digital skills affect nursing practice and healthcare quality. This study offers insight into the state of healthcare digitization in the Cayman Islands, serving as a benchmark for future research and potentially benefiting other healthcare settings. Second is in nursing education. The study's findings can guide nursing educators in emphasizing digital competence in training programs. This will prepare future nurses to effectively use advanced technology in healthcare settings. And last one is in nursing practice. Healthcare organizations can use the study's result to develop strategies and policies to enhance digital skills among nurses. This can lead to improved patients, uh, patient care, better outcomes, increased satisfaction, reduce error, enhance efficiency, and cost savings. In the review of literature, I'll break down each variable used in this study. The first variable is health information technology, or HIT, 
It is the research independent variable defined by Cooperman, Teishi, and others. It involves managing, processing, and exchanging healthcare data through technologies like electronic health records. This includes range of technologies for capturing, storing, protecting, and retrieving clinical, administrative, or financial data, leveraging cloud computing and mobile communication to enhance healthcare quality, reduce costs, and improve efficiency. Recent studies by several um, authors, Daniel Mensa, Alutaibi, Federico, and other highlights HIT role in improving patient data accuracy, care coordination, decision making, and personalized treatment while reducing errors in waiting times. The International Trade Administration defines HIT as comprehensive information processing system for healthcare. According to Citig and Singh, factors like infrastructure, cost, and skilled workforce influence HIT complexity. There are eight essential subdimensions found on HIT. The first one, um, research by Alutaibi, Federico Bohr, and Neymar Zadeh emphasizes the need for robust hardware and software, infrastructure including edge computing and AI integration. Second subdimension is clinical decision support system and patient education materials as studied by Shamaravi et al. and Patrick et al are crucial components of HIT, enhancing clinical decisions and patient engagement. The third one is com Human Computer Interface, or HCI, highlighted by Luna et al. and Gupta. It focuses on user-centered design, usability, and communication improvements. The fourth sub-dimension is human factors, as discussed by C. Begin Singh and usability.gov. It emphasizes tailoring system to user needs. The fifth one is effective workflow and communication, supported by studies from Luna et al. and Ma Nolovic et al. They say that it is a vital um, for HIT, which automates tasks and fosters information exchange. Another one is organizational policies, procedures, and culture for research by Keshta, Ode, and others significantly impact HIT implement implementation. Another one is compliance with external regulations like those studied by the American Hospital Association and reciprocity is critical for successful HIT adoption, ensuring patient safety and data security. Finally, system measurement and monitoring emphasized by Hugh Hess, City, Belmont Singh, and Kotamasu are essential for assessing and improving HIT performance in hot dogs. The second variable or the research mediating variable is digital competence. It encompasses information and data literacy or IDL, communication, collaboration, digital content creation, problem solving, and safety. These are critical in healthcare. There are five essential sub-dimensions found in digital competence, as mentioned. First one is IDL as defined by studies from D3 to 2022 and AMA in 2017 involves responsibly finding, evaluating, and using digital information with continuous training being crucial. Second one is communication and collaboration, highlighted in EU's Digicom 2.2 framework and by Rodriguez Garcia 2022. These are essential for effective digital in interaction, particularly in healthcare for patient care coordination. The third one is digital content creation, emphasized by SCOV in 2016 and Abdul Rahman on 2020 plays a significant role in education, healthcare resource utilization. The fourth one is problem solving. As a key component of digital competence, it is vital for navigating digital healthcare environments, improving patient outcomes, and streamlining operations. The last one is safety. It is paramount in healthcare to prevent errors and safeguard patient data, uh, according to Sud and McNeil in 2017. The third one, or the study's independent variable, is service quality. According to Kotler, in 2007, he described service quality as intangible offerings contrasting with tangible goods in their complexity measurement. Para Suman and Berry in 1988 defined service quality as a difference between customer expectations and perceived service quality, aiding in identifying service gaps. Additionally, seen from a customer centric view by a study. Rumin Jap and Wonderbody in 2017, Martin 
Elk and Gramer in 2020 proposed a multifaceted perspective on service quality, encompassing customer value, agreed delivery, ecosystem integration, and societal values. This indicates that quality interpretation varies by context and stakeholder, integrating customer expectations, universal standards, collective perspectives, and societal impact. In healthcare service quality, as defined by Institute of Medicine or IOM, emphasizes health services that enhance desired outcomes in align with professional knowledge, focusing on patient safety, clinical effectiveness, and patient experience. Consum et al. 2005 identify attribute shaping healthcare quality, including technical performance, interpersonal relationship, amenities, responsiveness, efficiency, and cost effectiveness. Poor quality can invoke negative emotion in patients and families, emphasizing the need for responsive comprehensive care system. Therefore, um, the researcher found five essential side dimensions found on service quality. The first one is tangibility. A significant dimension of service quality involves physical service components such as facilities and equipment impacting patient treatment and satisfaction. The second one is empathy, focuses on providers' ability to communicate, to communicate effectively and understand patients' needs, showing genuine concern and personalized care. The third one is reliability, ensures consistent, dependable service delivery and accuracy in billing and records. Fourth is responsiveness, highlights prompt service delivery and addressing customer needs quickly. And the fifth one is assurance, involves employee knowledge and courtesy, fostering trust and confidence in their expertise. The interplay between health information technology, service quality, and digital competence highlighted by Westbrook 2009, Albagni 2021, and Alotai and Federico 2017 underscore the need for digital competence to effectively utilize HID tools, such as electronic health records and improved health care service quality. Challenges like infrastructure, limitations, costs, workforce skills gap, and resistance to change in paid HIT implementation and healthcare quality. Integrating digital literacy into education and training is crucial for enhancing HIT use and overall healthcare service quality. The digital competence of individuals is influenced by various moderating factors, including age, sex, and practice type, which affect the adoption and proficiency in using digital technologies. Age is a critical factor as studied by Hiponemi in 2022 and JAF in 2020 show that older adults, especially those over 60 or 80, are less inclined or able to use online service, services, potentially leading to digital exclusion despite having good digital competence. Education level significantly correlates with digital proficiency with higher education levels associated with higher digital competence. Those with lower educational backgrounds generally possess fewer digital skills. Practice type also affects digital literacy with radiology staff, paramedics, assistant nurses, and laboratory staff showing lower digital literacy compared to physicians, negatively impacting patient care quality and safety. To bridge the digital divide across different age groups, educational backgrounds, and healthcare practice types, Comprehensive education, training programs are essential to ensure equitable access and proficiency in utilizing digital te technologies. This study underpinned on service performance scale model or SERPERF model by Cronin and Taylor. SERPERF evaluates service quality by comparing customer expectations to actual experience. In healthcare, it links HIT use and digital proficiency to care quality. The research paradigm illustrate, illustration will be shown after this slide. This paradigm describes the writer's proposed connection of digital competence dimensions and assess their impact on service quality in the nursing practice. It also describes the moderating connection of age, sex, education, and practice type on HIT use and service quality. This illustrates the hypothesized concept structure of the mediating role of digital competence on the relationship of HIT use and service quality of nurses. This study aims to determine the digital competence dimensions in employing HIT of nurses in their practice and to ascertain service quality impacts. 
Furthermore, social demographic profile will be assessed to determine the moderating effect of HIT users' age, sex, education, and practice type between the predictor and the outcome variable. The study employed quantitative research design to investigate the relationship between variables. It was chosen for its ability to provide accurate objective measurements using standardized equipment and statistical techniques. The design included descriptive analysis, comparative analysis, correlational analysis, and structural modeling to explore complex relationship between health information technology and service quality. Descriptive, comparative, and correlational designs were used to gauge the nature of these relationships, emphasizing the importance of digital competence. Structural equation modeling was used to test theoretical models and assess how HIT influenced service quality with digital competence acting as a mediator. The study focuses on nurses in three major hospitals, public district clinics, and private practice clinics examining the correlation between digital competence, HIT use, and service quality. Proposing something was used to select participants who met specific criteria, including working at least 20 hours weekly in patient care and having experience with HIT. Approximately 200 nurses were sampled from a reported pool of 620, ensuring statistical rigor and adequacy. Data were collected by a printed and online questionnaire sent to HIT users in healthcare. The questionnaire explored aspects of HIT use, digital competence, and service quality, drawing from frameworks like ENGOJ, EU, OECD, UNESCO, NAEP, ATCS, NETS, B21, and modified SERPERF model by Ivanov uh, et al. in 2022. The questionnaire was tailored to fit the nursing context, ensuring relevance, validity, and reliability. A scoring system standardized response, enabling clear comparisons and analysis. Statistical analysis examined relationships between the variables with the questionnaire divided into four parts. An introductory message, demographic details, HIT dimensions, and digital competence and services quality dimensions. During data gathering, the researcher initiated contact with nursing managers and supervisors across major healthcare facilities, including hospitals, clinics, and private practices, through formal emails and letters to introduce the study and seek participation. Messaging apps like Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp were used for follow-up interactions, with Messenger serving to remind participants of the study and WhatsApp facilitating the distribution of digital service and quick updates. Surveys were distributed digitally via WhatsApp for convenience, while printed copies were provided for those who preferred them, accompanied by face-to-face -face interactions for additional support. A structured follow-up system ensured timely survey completion with reminders sent through various communication channels. Ethical considerations such as data confidentiality and participants' rights were strictly maintained throughout the process. This multifaceted approach aimed to engage nursing managers and supervisors effectively, respecting their schedules, ensuring high quality data collection. Experts assessed the questionnaire for relevance and clarity. The majority of items were rated as highly relevant or four, with a few receiving quite relevant three, but none rated as not relevant. This indicates comprehensive relevance across various perspectives, including nursing, layman, layman, and research viewpoints. Clarity ratings were consistently high, with most it's deemed highly clear or for demonstrating consensus on the questionnaire's clarity. The pilot study revealed insights into HIT utilization, digital competence, proficiency, and healthcare quality service perceptions, indicating usefulness of device tool. The demographic profile of the 144 respondents indicated a varied distribution across age groups, with a mean age of approximately 32.15 years, predominantly mid-career, professional age between 31 to 50 years. Female respondents outnumbered male respondents, with registered nurses being the largest group, followed by nurses practitioners, nurse specialists, and nurse aides or assistants. The study evaluated respondents' level of health information technology use, revealing moderate to intermediate proficiency across different aspects of digital literacy. 
While there was strong perception of reliability and satisfaction in HIT utilization, further analysis showed varying levels of proficiency in digital competence with the need of improvement in communication, collaboration, digital content creation, problem solving, and safety skills. In terms of service quality, so respondents perceive high levels of satisfaction across various domains, indicating strengths in tangible attributes as well as empathetic responsiveness, assured and reliable service delivery. The research findings also suggested a significant relationship between HIT use, digital competence, and service quality, with digital competence playing a mediating role, role in this relationship. The research highlights varying levels of digital competence among nurses, with many falling within basic to intermediate proficiency levels in areas such as communication, collaboration, digital content creation, and problem solving. Despite this, there's a significant correlation between the utilization of health information technology and perceived ser service quality. Nurses with basic to intermediate digital skills perceive higher service quality when engaging more frequently with HIT. This underscores the vital role of digital competence as a mediator between HIT use and service quality, emphasizing the importance of enhancing nurses' digital skills to optimize patient care. Moderating variables. While nurses across various demographics may exhibit differing levels of digital proficiency, the correlation between health information technology utilization and perceived service quality remains consistent. However, demographic factors can influence nurses' priorities and expectations regarding service delivery, highlighting the need for tailored interventions to address diverse needs within nursing practice. Understanding these modulating variables provides valuable insights for designing targeted training programs and implementing effective strategies to enhance digital competence among nurses, ultimately improving overall service quality in healthcare settings. Significant correlations um, and implications, strong correlations between HIT utilization and service quality, positive impact of HIT on workflow communication and overall service quality. Digital competence significantly mediates the relationship between HIT use and service quality. Demographic factors like age, sex, practice type influence service quality perceptions. And further research is needed to explore precise correlations and predictors of service quality. Research um, positive correlations and implication um, between HIT use and service quality highlights technology's role in healthcare delivery. Nurses' digital competence influences HIT utilization, emphasizing the need for ongoing training. And the demographic factors impact service quality perceptions requiring tailored care approaches. The research um, recommendation is prioritizing comprehensive HIT training development strategies for addressing demographic variations in care delivery and promoting ongoing research to inform evidence-based intervention are crucial for healthcare improvement. This is the end of um, the presentation. Thank you for your participation. If you have any questions, kindly send it over to the organizer. I will try to respond to your query as soon as I receive them. Please don't forget to provide your email address when leaving your questions. Bye.